here's one other video about Venn diagrams with an example from the Aristotelian perspective. So if you'll remember, we looked at this example in exercise 5.1, Roman numeral 2, about pranksters and leprechauns. And by determining the mood and figure of the argument, we determined using the chart that it was invalid from both perspectives. But what would happen if I were to take this same argument and use a Venn diagram? So if I had all pranksters are exasperating individuals, consequently some leprechauns are exasperating individuals, since all leprechauns are pranksters, and I put it into the correct standard form, making sure that everything was in the right order, I would again get all P are E, all L are P, therefore some L R E. I know that my mood and figure was A A I 1 and we can use that later to check our work. So if I were to use a Venn diagram you need to know one extra thing about diagrams from the Aristotelian point of view. If I do a Venn diagram for this argument, I'll draw my three circles, my middle term, which is now P, my major term, which is E, will go here, and my minor term, L, will go here. If I say all P, R, E, off to the side, it would look like this. All members of P are to be shaded out except for those that are also members of E because all members of P are E and I'm shading out what's unimportant and leaving blank what is. Same here, if I was looking at all L are P, Then again, I would say all members of L are members of P. So I want to shade out all the members of L that are not important. If I put that into the larger diagram, I'm again going to, if I'm working with the P and E circles, I'm going to ignore the L circle and shade right over it because again, I am working with universal premises and I have two of them, so it didn't matter that I entered in one first. I'll make a separate video showing you how to deal with Venn diagrams and particular statements. Also, if I look at the L and P circle, this part is represented here on the diagram, so I'm going to shade out everywhere in L that is not also in P. If you find that you have two universal premises and um, a term that does not exist like unicorn, centaur, currently living, should be two ends in Tyrannosaur, etc. or in this example, L. These are red flags for the Aristotelian perspective. The third red flag is if there's one circle completely shaded except for one part. So at the end, when you figured out both of your universal premises, they've been entered into the argument, there's going to be one circle that's completely shaded in except for one part. Can you see now how the L is completely shaded in 
it's one, two, three, four parts are all shaded in except for here. You're gonna put a little X with a circle around it. I don't know why they chose that as a symbol, but you're gonna put an X with a circle around it. It has nothing to do with the other X's. Um, that can be confusing, so be aware of that. You're gonna put that X there, and what that X in a circle means is that this is the term in question. It matches up, believe it or not, it matches up with the required condition on the conditionally valid forms chart. So if you're looking at AAI1 on the unconditionally valid forms chart, you can see it's not there, but it is here and the required condition is that S exists that matches up with our circle that's been completely shaded except for one. It's the term in question here, and it's the term in question because of the diagram. So we know that it could have been conditionally valid from the Aristotelian perspective, but is not. It is in fact invalid from both perspectives. Because leprechauns which if you'll remember is what L stood for in the original argument, leprechauns do not exist. So the term L was the one in question. Leprechauns do not exist. That's how you would do a Venn diagram from the Aristotelian perspective.